Hello, my soccer universe. Let's review the Premier League and a little bit area divisia. There was not much action there, as we will see as well. Um, I'm wearing City. You know now I'm loath to wearing a team where I have only one jersey uh, because it's not up on the wall, but you read the headline. It's over. I think it's uh, appropriate to wear the City jersey. Um, ahead of all the other judges because it's over. I think we can call the Premier League title race by this point. It needs a collapse of epic proportions, I think, that City will not win this championship. Uh, speaking of City jerseys, I'm working on a proper home jer jersey. I'm a little bit upset. I saw one for 10 bucks earlier this year and now the seller is not putting it up again because I let it slide. So yeah, let's see where this goes. Yep, uh, let's go to the other he headlines. I mean, there's not much more. I mean, it's over. I think uh, City thoroughly destroyed. Um, Liverpool has now at least a 10 point advantage with a game at hand over Liverpool. The only other team that has probably a chance or uh, had probably a chance catching him also spills the points in Manchester United, who uh, concede late an equalizer that basically dusts off their options. And I think that's the main things that we're gonna talk about in this video. Uh, yes, Chelsea keeps on winning, finally concedes a goal, and Leicester also drops points. So, I mean, it's all laid out for City. And in the Dutch league, the Eredivisie, yeah, I think a snowstorm came through and wiped <laughs> wiped the slate of games to be played clean. Let's start Premier League. I mean, it started early with Aston Villa getting a very early deflect goal against Arsenal. Arsenal not being able to find a way uh, back there. Uh, Burnley, Brighton ends uh, with a 1-1. Newcastle uh, looked really, really safe against Southampton, who just came off the 9-0 drubbing. Uh, but Southampton got themselves in, in into the game and then Newcastle had a scare with a man sent off. But yeah, um, still held on to the 3-2 draw. Men sent off and not being able to make any substitutions or whatsoever. So um, they were down to nine men. Uh, full in West Ham uh, in a slightly entertaining. And I actually have to say, I have to give credit to Fulham for really uh, playing uh, quite nicely. But again, not converting their chances. Uh, nil nil draw of the better sort um, with an absolute ridiculous red card. Uh, yeah. VAR is so perfect in other leagues, but I have to say, whenever I see some of the decisions made in the Premier League, they need some extra schooling. I mean, uh, you can really tell they're missing the extra year. <laughs> That's there. We'll really start with a review of uh, United Everton, which I was so happy that I chose to watch this game. I mean, six goal game, it's always happy. Uh, it had everything in there. It had great goals. It had a team that was dominant. Dumb it had a fight back in there. It had goalkeeping mistakes. Uh, it was fun to watch for most of the time. In the first half, it was all United. Uh, we don't need to talk anything. I mean, uh, the way Rashford crosses it in for Cavani to, ha uh, to pull the ball in the net was already really nice. United totally had Everton on the uh, back foot. And then uh, what Fernandes did to just outside of box, put the ball in into the net. Yes, I blame slightly the goalkeeper, but that was a great, great shot. If the goalkeeper was positioned a little bit better, I think uh, he would have saved it. My favorite comment in what was to come was, of course, that, yeah, if there was a great goalkeeper like Alisson in there, he would have saved it. Yeah, we all saw that Alisson was not that great. Uh, Everton, though, had a Good chance before the half where they could uh, fight themselves back, but you could see Goa going to the tunnel. Uh, Angelotti was not happy. And Everton comes out storming. Um, Calvert Lewin uh, runs into the box, takes a shot that the hair needs to hold on until he spills it to Curé, puts it in the 49th. And then three minutes later, Ducouré assists Carlos Rodriguez, who is free in, in, in the box, uh, stop the ball, take it down, put it in, in the internet. 2-2. Two, two. At this point, I have to say, totally undeserved. Uh, United were the better team, but you could see that uh, Everton were fighting themselves as back. And I have to say, especially what they played in the first 15, 20, 20 minutes of the second half, they kind of pulled a little bit level. However, it was not the end of this game because uh, Luke Shaw free kick 
uh, finds McTominay's head. And Robin Olsen, a goalkeeper that actually I think had a great World Cup, well, similar to Pickford, slips on the line. I mean, he was uh, the source of ridicule for Roma right after the World Cup. Then he went to Cagliari where he didn't do well. And now he surplus the requirement and suddenly he's at Everton. And Everton find themselves with the national team goalies of England and Sweden. And both are not really work, working out. That's clearly on him. Uh, yes. It can happen there, there at a slide, but uh, not a great goal called keeping performance. And then I really thought that United will hang on uh, and maybe even get a fourth one. I always felt that United had more the goal in, in, in them than Everton. Uh, it all seemed a little bit uh, weird. And then it's stoppage time. And that was a really, a little bit of a, in, especially with hindsight. I mean, it's always easy with hindsight. Baffling self substitution when, uh, so Sosha took off Greenwood and brought on to Anzebe. I mean, he had only made one substitution because Pogba went off with a, a muscle injury where immediately, in the, even in the first half, Ferret came on, uh, which also a little bit um, stunned uh, United's uh, game, I have, I, I, I have to say, because Fred is a little bit more on the defensive side of things. But that substitution totally backfired. He wanted to make more time, but a lot of time went uh, off the clock. Then uh, Tuanzebe uh, makes the foul, gets a freak, and it's the last kick of the game. And it is yanked deep in, in into the box where Keane had headed it down into Calvert-Lewin's path, who suddenly finds himself free of goal and puts it in. 3-3, three, three, stealing a point from United right there. Great game. I can understand if you're a United fan, you're not happy if you're an Everton fan. And speaking of Everton, that was the missing, that, that was the new shirt in the last video. It's of course now up here, you don't see much of it because it is in <laughs> the upper spot there. But yeah, Everton uh, is the answer to the puzzle and Everton steals a point there. Uh, Spurs has, uh, has suddenly Harry Kane back, uh, big surprise, and he is instrumental in getting in giving himself a 2 0 win over West Brom, but it's only West Brom. We have to say Wolves, Leicester, also uh, nil nil. There were chances to win it uh, on both sides, especially at the end. I think with uh, Silva take take a shot where you think he has missed it, but then you see that Kasper Schmeichel made a great save, uh, and also the, um, on the other end, deep in stops over time, Jamie Vardy, who made a comeback. Also missed a header that he usually does, does not miss, but it ends nil-nil. So everything looking toward the big Liverpool City matchup. It has to be said, I mean, uh, it was clear from the get-go that this will be uh, the game that City will dominate, and dominate they did most of the time. I saw much less from the game that I wanted, thanks to Lask not being able to pull away a second league team in regulation, which meant that I, I was switching back and forth between these games, which is never good. You get a kind of the feel of how the game, game is going, but it's never good, 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 you know, of, of where the game stands, and so, but it's never good. Um, way to get a feel of a game. Um, from what I hear from com commentary, I mean, and I had the feeling also the City, of course, was to the bad team, but had hardly any shots and goal, but for that, it was a uh, kind of exciting game. I found myself, like when the last game went to halftime, I watched the last 15 minutes of the Liverpool City game, and I honestly, I couldn't take my eyes off it. It was really an enthralling watch, although there were not many chances. There was one early for Mane, and then a penalty given to City, which... <laughs> I don't think we can argue that. I mean, if the panel, if the ref call, calls it, it's a penalty because there's contact there, but it did not seem like a, you know, a foul. But you know, these panels get called, and then City does what City does best: missing penalties and having. It's kind of ironic at the same time. Lask was playing, who also missed a penalty because they also hor hor horrible. Fortunately, Milan uh, did not get a penalty that day. So Gundogan steps up, short uh, run up, wants to pull it high, but puts it over the goal. Uh, I hate it, by the, by the way, this perspective where you're behind the, the the striker. Yeah, I get it, but it's too much video game and too little, uh, you know, what I'm used to. But, you know, I'm old school there. So Liverpool survived that, that one. And, you know, the game was intense, but um, City's class shone through. And especially what Raheem Sterling and Phil Foden, and note, those are two English guys. In a, in a Guardiola system were absolutely uh, outstanding throughout the whole whole game. Um, Foden 
uh, is instrumental in getting Gün in getting Gundogan's first goal in the forward for for the ninth. Then, uh, yeah, Ruben Dias when Salah goes in in the box. I mean, he just hurt. He just touches. Of course, Salah is going on the off the uh, penalty. It's one one, and you think game on. But I, at this point, it was still City who were the better, better team, and and, and you could see that City will actually maybe get get away with it. That it then comes from um, a, a mistake by Allison that came a little bit unexpected, and I don't necessarily buy the cold feet excuse uh, that uh, Klopp had. It gets a little bit too excusey. I mean, John Stones had a goal uh, this day, so allowed for offside, that that was all, all, all right. But then uh, the way Allison placed the ball out, uh, it should not uh, place it there. Foden again takes, takes, takes the ball, plays it to Gundogan, who makes his second and completely, uh, you know, Makes everyone forget about the pen penalty miss, and then uh, again, two minutes later or three, three minutes later, Allison with the ball on his foot plays it out to the right, uh, which is his standard pass out, and of course again, this uh, uh, phone intercepted and gets it to Bernardo Silva, something like that. and the way Bernardo Silva chips it over Allison, I absolutely loved it, and Raheem Sterling kept pulling the net. That kills the game, and then Foden, Foden with another great shot makes it 4 1. Resounding victory of City over Liverpool. They hadn't won there, I think, under Guardiola at all. Um, and Liverpool, after winning, being so long unbeaten at Anfield, now three in a row lost at home. I can understand why Klopp is a little bit sour, but, but um, yeah, it's not a good look for him. Let's put let's put it that way. But basically, he Liverpool is now completely out of the tie title race, and the question is, can they finish top four with the form they're current they're currently having? Um, we'll answer that when we look at the tables. Um, we have to also say is Chelsea. Consists the first goal, which was an own goal, uh, missed communication, but Mason Mount, and then, yeah, kind of, kind of cheap penalty penalty uh, on Timo Werner. Jorginho pulls it away, gives Chelsea a 2 1 win at Sheffield United. Nothing to really write home about, but you know, uh, since Tuchel is there, che Chelsea had a little bit right at the ship. And yesterday in the evening, Leeds United beats Crystal Palace 2 0. So let's look at the standings and let's try to answer a few questions. According to my model, 93% chance of uh, City winning the title. That's more or less it. Just look at the pure fact. Five ahead of United with a game in hand. This is Atletico Madrid style and the squad of City is way deeper. Yes, uh, Liverpool has many in injuries, uh, but, but that's also one problem for Liverpool is that uh, they're not as deep as Manchester City. I think even Manchester United has a little bit more, has a more of an even squad. Uh, I'm not one to say that uh, a deeper squad than Liverpool, but uh, I have the feeling that the loss in quality for United is not as big as the loss of quality with Liverpool. Leicester also now only for the three points, so it's really, it's all geared towards Manchester City. Um, it has to be a collapse of epic proportions for City to lose this title. Um, speaking of the top four chances for Liverpool, it, they are now at 80%, it's still odds on favourite and I would actually agree with that. I think that Liverpool will find their way again. They, it's just now this rough patch in the season, which is of course uh, hor horrible. And, you know, it allows them also to concentrate on the Champions League. So this is another way to get back uh, in to European com com competition, although it's a kind, of, kind, of, kind of a tough one. Chelsea and Leicester kind of level on making, uh, fi filling the spots. Um, I would love if Leicester could go in there. Doesn't look... Uh, yeah, will be tight. Will we, we will be tight because Chelsea has... I think the better squad of overall, but I really am keeping my fingers crossed. Uh, despite my slight sympathies for Chelsea, I think I really think that Leicester would deserve to finally get into the Champions League again. Um, for the behind, I mean, West Ham, Everton, Spurs, maybe Villa can dream of European uh, play next season. And I think starting with Leeds and Arsenal and, 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 and some weird, we're done. Also relegation pretty much decided. I mean, the gap between Fulham and Burnley is still than uh, eight points. And 
it's not impossible, but it needs Burnley to slip and also Newcastle now pay picking up. That win makes it really hard uh, for Fulham to actually gain some uh, traction. Although they're actually not a bad team. They're not bad to watch, let's, let's put that that way, but you don't pick up enough points. Uh, we actually could adjust a little bit and we actually see with the two games in hand that Everton has, although they will lose one against Man United, Manchester City most likely. They are even ahead of Liverpool and Chelsea, so that's uh, the adjusted standing. Same uh, goes for Aston Villa. They also have a few games, games, games in hand, so that will put them a little bit closer in contention. Uh, and just for completeness sake, the expected standings, yeah, Manchester City, right there. I mean, it's so green there. They will become cha cha champions. Then uh, United and Liverpool are the other two, and then uh, tight uh, battle for the final spot between Chelsea and Leicester. Um, and as I said, yeah, I mean, they give still are my model still gives our Arsenal a chance over Leeds United based on the good rating. And when we look at the relegation, it's all Newcastle, Fulham, Sheffield United, West Brom in that order. In the midweek, we have an FA Cup round. Um, pick, I mean, we have United, West Ham, uh, which could be interesting. I think Everton, Spurs. Sounds interesting. Uh, I heard that Swansea is playing well, so let's see what they can do against Manchester City. But I have to, I have to say it's nothing that I, that I have to say. This is a must watch for me. At, at least I'm gonna watch other cup games uh, in this midweek in other countries. The least Spain, I would say. And then on the weekend, a big one: Leicester against Liverpool. I think this could go a whole long way of. Uh, setting either one of those for a top four path. Uh, if Leicester wins that one, I would give them the advantage and then Liverpool will be struggling. Manchester City against Spurs, uh, League Cup final preview. Uh, and also, you know, can Guardiola finally get one over Mourinho because Spurs... That, if they can do one, one thing, they can outplay Manchester City in, in, in a way. Arsenal leads, United is one that uh, pops out and I mean Chelsea Newcastle is near and dear to my heart because I saw them in the early 2000s but that was back then when both teams were actually good. As I said in the Netherlands we had many postponements but I think there was a big snow uh, storm calm coming through so the only thing we got was P uh, of the big teams we got AZ winning over Emin and PSV with a 3-0 easy victory over Twente with Mollen and Sahavi. Mollen scoring twice and Sahavi getting another one there too. Um, Ajax and Feyenoord could not play and this is postponed. I don't know until when. I think we have to wait for the situation. Uh, Ajax still comfortably, I mean even more comfortable than Manchester City even with the game in hand over PSV and Vitesse. Um, if, and in the expected standings you see the same thing. It's pretty clear. Uh, we should probably look here at the adjusted standings although it doesn't change much. Utrecht uh, jumps here in vain. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> Now that, that that is not an even league, it's probably worth adjusting there. Uh, in the midweek, given that the weather gets better, we would have a cup round and uh, with the big one, Ajax against PSV, I think on Wednesday, if you have the chance, I think this might be well worth watching. And on the weekend, nothing as big. We have Ajax playing as Heracles, AZ against Heron Wayne, uh, PSV at uh, Den Haag should be easy. Feyenoord against v v Willem Dwe, <laughs> also not really a big one there as well. So yeah, that was it from uh, Northwestern Europe, the leagues that I'm looking at. Um, drop a line below to uh, see what you can add. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing and clicking the little bell icon so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. With that. Have a wonderful day. Bye.